to all people and extended family around the globe. You've probably seen posts over the past week about farmers' protests in India. Let's try to better understand these laws and situation. India is still a developing country, with 60 to 70 percent population who survive on farming and majority of the farmers are poor. In September amidst the pandemic, Indian government passed three laws deregulating the agriculture sector in India. They did this without consulting any farmers' organizations. Here's a brief rundown in simple language of what these laws mean for farmers. Law number one eliminates all government subsidies for farmers and the minimum support price, or MSP, which the government guaranteed to farmers for at least a few grain crops, rice, wheat, corn, etc., which ranged from 10 to 15 U.S. dollars for 100 kilos, 220 pounds of grain produced, so $150 for a ton. This law also eliminates within a year or two the government-run infrastructure or procurement houses where a farmer could take his harvest and sell it to the government at the MSP. Mind you, no farmer ever got the MSP, thanks to rampant corruption and middlemen. So in its place, the government is letting private corporations and large companies take its place, where the farmers will have to do contract farming with the corporate and private sector. Whatever the company wants, the farmer grows as per contract and set upon price. You get the picture. Extreme exploitation of an already poor farmer. More farmers losing whatever they have. Law number two. If a farmer gets into a dispute with a private company, he cannot go to the courts. No legal recourse for 50 to 60 percent of India's population in case a big corporation exploits them. As a citizen of India, you can't go to your own Indian courts. Instead, some local government official will resolve and arbitrate the disputes. And who do you think the corrupt government official is going to be in favor of? Law number three. Any person or entity can hoard or store an unlimited quantity of any essential commodity or food product. 90 to 95 percent of farmers have no means to build their own cold storage, but large corporations do. You see a problem with that? So those are the laws. Basically, India is throwing the largest and poorest segment of its populace to the wolves. Why did the Indian government pass the farm bills during a global pandemic that is threatening agricultural workers? Our people are strong and their voice is being heard all over the world. This is the largest human protest in history. The peaceful protest is labeled as anti-national, calling the farmers terrorists. The Indian media is playing a manipulative part. But not this time. We have platforms now to raise awareness of the truth. Army is attacking the mostly elderly farmers. At least four died who just want their voice heard. What the government doesn't understand is that these elders are willing to die on the makeshift camp, then let the future of their children be lost in poverty and usurpation. In Bihar, farmers are at the mercy of corporations. They migrate to Punjab looking for work because deregulation has completely taken away their livelihood. This is why Punjab and Haryana farmers are at the forefront right now. But no mistake, this is a pan-India farmer issue. This is a farmer-led movement. So naturally, farmers all across India had been protesting in their own states since September, but no one cared. So finally, last week, Indian farmers from Punjab decided to take their protest to New Delhi, the Indian capital some walking and traveling on their tractors and carriages hundreds of miles to Delhi. But instead of having a safe journey to their own nation's capital, they were met with numerous police barricades, water cannons, tear gas canisters by the government in order to thwart their march to the capital. But despite all the obstacles and some deaths along the way, they got to Delhi's outskirts, only to find a heavy police and military presence in Delhi. And that is where the situation is gridlocked currently. The Minister of Agriculture has said they're open to talks, but the farmers want all three bills repealed before they'll even consider talks. The Prime Minister is a little dictatorial, and there exists a real possibility that he can order the police or the military to open fire at the protesting farmers. Farmer protests so far have been extremely peaceful and united. Farmers are camped out for miles on end on the roads approaching Delhi, and have brought enough food with them on their trolleys to last them many months. 
the mainstream Indian media is shining nothing but a negative light on the farmers' protests. Let's pledge to stand with our farmers.